Coffee, priced for its aroma and rich taste, is a worldwide favorite beverage. It is served in different variations like latte, the Americano, cappuccino, and espresso, which means there is something for each and everyone. In the U.S. alone, more than 400 million cups of coffee are consumed per day. And this popularity is mostly due to an addictive chemical contained in every cup, which is caffeine. Caffeine is a central nervous stimulant, to say the least. It stimulates the activity of your brain, which in turn increases alertness, energy, and the ability to concentrate. So multiple franchises in the U.S. like Starbucks, Dunkin', and Folgers, coffee is sold almost everywhere. But just like the majority of foods popularized and consumed by Americans, this drink is native to a different country. Where does it actually come from and how come it has spread throughout the entire world? To understand this, let's go back to the origins of coffee all the way back in 800 AD, Ethiopia, Africa. According to legend, the initial encounter with coffee dates back to the gold herder named Kaldi. The tale goes that Kaldi stumbled upon coffee when he observed that his goats became excessively lively after munching on the berries from a particular tree, making them reluctant to sleep at night. Intrigued by this, Kaldi informed the local monastery's abbot, who brewed a beverage with the berries and found that it kept him wide awake during the extended evening prayers. The abbot shared his discovery with the fellow monks, and the knowledge of these energizing berries began to spread. As the word traveled eastward, coffee eventually found its way to the Arabian Peninsula, embarking on a journey that would carry these beans across the globe. The first evidence of coffee beans were found in Ethiopia. It was first consumed as a beverage in western Yemen, 1450, by the country's mystical Sufi monk population who used the drink to help them stay awake during all-night meditations. The coffee they consumed, however, was brought by merchants in Ethiopia. The Arabian Peninsula became the cradle of coffee, cultivation, and consumption. Coffee houses known as Kaveh Hona, which meant coffee houses in Farsi, started to emerge. The notion of getting together in public for conversing and other entertainment over coffee can be traced back to a few centuries in Iran. Coffee's popularity quickly began to spread to Persia, Egypt, and the Ottoman Empire. As the Enlightenment era dawned in the 17th century, coffee became synonymous with an intellectual exchange. It was prepared by steeping ground beans in hot water, creating a drink that was often served with sugar and sometimes spices. Coffee houses were known as penny universities where patrons could engage in lively discussions, debate philosophy, and exchange ideas. These establishments, like the famed Café de Procope in Paris, buzzed with intellectualism. Thinkers such as Voltaire and Jean-Jacques Rousseau would meet regularly discussing the groundbreaking works over cups of coffee. Voltaire, for instance, composed some of his most influential essays and letters while sipping coffee at Café de Procope. The famous Encyclopédie, which was a first general encyclopedia published in France, a monumental work that contained the knowledge of the age, was conceived through discussions at coffee houses. Coffee houses became hubs of culture exchange as well, where people from different backgrounds gathered to discuss literature, politics, and current events. Coffee's appeal then continued to expand, reaching across the whole European continent. By the 19th century, coffee had journeyed to the New World. Brazil emerged as a coffee powerhouse. Coffee cultivation had been introduced to Brazil in the 18th century, but it was not until the 19th century the production soared. The fertile soil, favorable climate, and abundant labor resources in Brazil made it an ideal location for coffee plantations. By the mid-19th century, Brazil had become the world's leading coffee producer, a position it held for many years. For example, the establishment of coffee plantations in the state of Sao Paulo, which became a coffee producing epicenter in Brazil. In Americas, brands like Arbuckle's Coffee, also established in the mid-1800s, played a significant role in the making coffee more accessible to Americans. They sold pre-roasted coffee beans in convenient packaging, which was a novelty at the time. As coffee had already arrived in the States, the classic Americano also became well known with Americans. Its origins aren't very clear. It is widely believed to have been created during World War II. The story goes that American soldiers stationed in Italy found the local espresso to be too strong for their taste. To make it more closely resemble the drip coffee that they were used to back in the United States, they would dilute the espresso with hot water. The 20th century marked a significant transformation in coffee culture. Coffee, once considered a luxury, became a global commodity. Companies like Starbucks popularized the cafe culture in the United States, making espresso drinks and specialty coffee more accessible to the masses. Espresso-based drinks such as cappuccinos and lattes became more popular. The invention of the espresso machine revolutionized coffee preparation. 
instant coffee introduced in the early 1900s offered a quick and convenient way to enjoy coffee. The 21st century introduced a new focus on sustainability, fair trade practices, and a desire for artisanal, single origin beans, which have changed the way consumers view and enjoy coffee. Though some still prefer coffee in its most authentic, bitter form, most of its enthusiasts today, such as the youth, prefer a lighter option like espresso. Today, espresso based drinks are the most popular coffee variation. Here's a short video I found on YouTube on the origin of espressos. If you want to understand really where it came from, then I think one particular work of Leonetto Capiello is a really great place to start. He was an Italian-born artist working in Paris from the early 1900s until the end of the 1930s, and he's considered to be the father of modern poster advertising. He's famous for his work with Cinzano, Campari, and others, but it's his work in 1922 for Victoria Arduino that I think is of particular interest. Let me explain. The original espresso patent goes back to 1884 and belongs to Angelo Moriondo of Turin. He set out to solve an age-old problem with coffee. It takes a long time to brew. Now, Typically, to brew faster you'd need to grind finer, but there, water has a difficult time getting through the bed of coffee. His innovation was to leverage steam pressure to press the water through the grounds to be able to brew a little quicker. He never commercialized his patent, but it was built on later. First in 1903 by Luigi Bezzera, and then later by Desiderio Pavoni, both of whose names live on in the world of espresso machines. Now Bezzera's design introduced key innovations, and while he built a few machines, he didn't have the money to commercialize them, but Pavoni did. Pavoni bought the patents in 1903 and refined it further again, and the two men would end up collaborating. In 1906, at the Milan Fair, they showcased their inventions to the world, introducing what they called Café Espresso. It really was the perfect word. Coffee expressed, pushed out from the machine, but done so at speed. This innovation really marked the beginning of the espresso machine industry. Other manufacturers would quickly appear, including Pierre Terezio Arduino, who would come to commission Capiello's poster, which I think captures so much of early espresso. There are two things that I think are particularly interesting about the poster coming at the end of the age of steam, but it's absolutely leveraging the idea that steam equals speed. The train really was the perfect visual metaphor. This was coffee all about speed. Coffee brewed so quickly you could grab a cup from the side of a moving train. This is why espresso in the early days succeeded. It was all about speed. But look again, there's one more small detail in this poster that I think is worth noting. What the machine is brewing is very different to what we would think of as espresso today. It's brewing small cups of filter coffee, something that all espresso machines did at the time. This was not a new recipe, this was not a new type of drink. This innovation was about small cups of filter coffee at speed. Espresso's look, feel and recipe would really stay the same until the big innovation in 1948, mostly credited to Achille Gaggio. That's the moment where pressure transformed espresso into being a whole new category, a whole new drink. But that's a subject for a different video. Capiello's poster for Victoria Arduino is so common that it's become cliche, something you look at but don't really even see anymore. But I think it's fascinating what exists in the details and what it tells us about the birth of espresso. Today, coffee is not just a beverage, but a form of self-expression and a core part of the daily life of many, many Americans. Thank you all for watching my video.